We're recording. Let's go. Okay, so uh, welcome to another little talk. So I was going to say a little bit, so I'm not going to. We're also not going to talk about how late it is in the month this time, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to break a bad habit, See, finally. And the reason being because we have so many trends so to talk we about. Have too much and we have too much. The script too many is pretty this point. thick this time. Um, yeah, and also, this is our first video podcast. We are... I want to say live on air. We're not, because you can hear this is a recorded we're, edition. We're moving towards live. You can see us. You can see our animations. Yep. And you can see... You can see how, how the sausage gets made. Um, <laughs> yeah, the idea was to, to increase reach, which is one of the things we always tell clients they need to do. And that's what we're doing here. So we're going to get uh, I love it. use a video, try to use. You know what? I'm going to say this. If the video for some reason doesn't work out and you go looking for it on YouTube, we'll have something else there. Yes. I'm gonna, we're going to get the podcast on YouTube, but it may not be the video that we're referring to during this podcast. I think that's okay. We're three I, vain I men. We don't know case. how this is going to yeah, turn we, out. I mean, I wish someone could come and take a picture of this setup because it's so <laughs> janky. <laughs> Camera's oh, right it's, there. It's going to get worse. We're on a step stool, but it's good. It's going to get worse because oh, I want to have I want to have a two to three camera setup at some point. I love it. Just as long as it's With not a switcher. the back of my head. Well, you know, I, I, I need to present budgets for 2023 <laughs> to Sam to include yeah, some right. additional equipment. But uh, anyhow, uh, welcome back. We have a few things to go over, but obviously if you're watching yeah. this, you know we have another guest. We can't go more than two weeks anymore without a special guest. And I think it's awesome. It is awesome. Yes. So t uh, today with us, and we're going to jump the gun a little you're bit. You're going to like this guest, and I think, based on this topic. You're going to love this guest. Brock Campbell, our VP of Strategy and uh, Client Engagement here. Excited to have you in the podcast house. Brock, welcome. Hello. Hello, everybody. Yeah, he's here, and he's he's here for a specific reason. <laughs> a very specific reason, which we're going to dive into yep. a little bit, because it's going to be a nice five to seven minute Brock segment on what we are calling the truth and of to, his travel expeditions. And to, yes, and to make sure that you don't leave, it involves Chelsea. <laughs> so Boom. you're going to get to we hear. Got, we have you hooked. Yeah, it's so you're, you're here now. Uh, <laughs> Sam, you were out of town yeah, I was, for a bit I was last gone, week. Um, you know, we recorded last week early on the podcast, uh, Wednesday through Friday. I was in Newport, Rhode Island. For those that have not been to Newport, absolutely amazing, especially this time of year. Fall is definitely hitting the Northeast. I so hear beautiful. around Christmas. Obviously, I'm a big Christmas guy. Um, apparently, it's like a Hallmark movie straight out of. Wait, what? Well, first off, it may not be obvious to some people you're a big Christmas guy, but yes. Sam dresses up as Santa Claus for, Hall Halloween. for Halloween. He can't wait till December for Santa Claus wait, wait, activities. Did I tell you guys when your the, decorations going up? And my decorations are going up in my house. First of them, <laughs> really November one, they're up. It's, it's it, ever since COVID, that's what we do now, and, it, and it's it's awesome. Fun fact: I just bought a new Santa suit. Uh, I did know this. <laughs> you did, did know that? Yeah, it's a I, big freaking deal. I think I saw you post about Where it. Where do you buy that at? I bought it off Amazon, and it's nice. My old one was kind of like crap. Yeah, lined I with didn't want to felt or something. What it's, makes a Santa suit nice? It's so it's it is velvet. Great question, Brock. It is bougie it is so like I, i'll just say there's some bells there's some whistles it's are you amazing. gonna wear it on the halloween <laughs> podcast <laughs> actually yeah i probably okay. will so anyway so i was up in newport rhode island i had the what i'm calling a once in a life once in a lifetime opportunity to i actually married my best friend and her husband i was their officiant That's, it was i won't go into the details it was the most beautiful amazing wedding i've ever been to it was f um filmed it was conducted in the Great Gatsby Mansion. That's like where the Great Gatsby was filmed is where my best friend got married. Did did you have to form a fake church or anything to get your no? So your that, license that, that, I didn't have to go through that uh, down that rabbit hole. That's I paid twenty five dollars to the great state of Rhode Island and um, became I I was a pastor from twelve oh one a.m. on September twenty second until eleven fifty nine p.m. that evening. Did you do any? Did, did you do anything else that uh, was with the pastor oh title good question good wow. question you know what i should have gone around town like they like hey this is your one your one time chance to do this because i can sign wedding license. i signed their wedding license with yeah. my officiant number and yeah, it's legit but anyway it was awesome it was a hell of a party i did miss tara couldn't be there because my family was on vacation in florida and she had to watch matt matt slash run her business so i missed her there but it was it was awesome um it was good to be back. I came back to the agency. There were some new benches in the lobby from our boy Ben. Yeah, at Woody, Woody River Hardwood. You can see them on our TikTok channel. Uh, we, we posted about it last sick. week. Ben, you crushed it, dude. Yeah, they're they're insane. And I, I think there's is there more stuff coming. There's two more barstools coming. It's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> How big was this tree? This 
Probably massive. Probably massive. Nice oak. I think it's an, an oak tree. It looks fantastic. And I, I hear you're having meetings on the benches as well. Yeah, I literally had a meeting <laughs> with Katie Kite yesterday. On it the was, benches. Well, and Brock, you've been using the table quite a bit. I see you there Love frequently. The table. I, yeah, so the table, the benches, the soon-to-be bar stools, it's all come together. Yeah. It's it, this is like this is the best saga ever. I know. I'm going to be sad when there's no more. I mean, this table could use a replacement. I'm going to need some shelves for in here for cameras. There's other word work we could have done. Our CPA is going to look at our expenses next year. <laughs> Why did you spend 50K in wood tables? On lumber. Tables? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, uh, Rube, you take the next one. This is a cool uh, shout out. Yeah, for... we didn't. So last Monday, um, we recorded the podcast this, after no. this, and somehow, again, so many things happening, we let a birthday slip past. Boo. Sorry. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's Sydney. Happy Sydney's and birthday how old was. Is like... Sydney? Don't ask me how old Sydney is. Sydney Rock, is. Yeah, how old Sydney is? I'm going to say 20. Three. I'm gonna say 23. No, she's 22. What? Wow. Guys, no! she's she's 21 when we hired her. Oh my gosh. Yeah, she just turned 22. This it's is, insa- it's crazy. I well, she's she's I don't wise. I didn't know if I knew my own name at 22. <laughs> she's oh. wise and talented beyond her years. Ha- happy birthday, Sid. Happy birthday, Sid. We do. We love Sydney. Um, Roop, what do, what does the agency slash you and Sydney call each other? <laughs> Sydney came up with this. So, um. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. Uh, when you so need to reference was her 90 the ninety-day review, yeah, I was during her ninety-day review. She came up with it, but like, I, I guess when you need to reference the interactive department collectively, now you don't call us the interactive department; you call us soup, <laughs> and it's combining uh, Sydney and Roop, nice. and it's spelled S O O P, <laughs> which I, I don't know. So if awesome. I think it's soap. I, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, yeah, she came up with the nickname Soup. Uh, soup. 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 Soup to nuts, as we say. So, anyhow. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, Sydney. Uh, sorry we missed you last week, and sorry we overestimated your age. <laughs> yeah, she's young, young and thriving. I'll do that for the next 10 years of your life, probably. Okay, so we get into the meat of this segment before we dive into digital trends. Yeah. Brock, it is so great to have you here. If you could give us a quick overview of um, what you've been doing here at Littlefield Agency over the last few years, specifically your role in working with Chelsea, and then let's just cut to the chase and let's let's hear about Rip this, the, the other off. side of this. Okay, we're back after a quick uh, bout, a quick fight with some technical difficulties. The card was full, but uh, we're back. After Anyhow. years of great. Yes, yes, yes. After. But anyway, Brock. Brock, yeah, you let's, were saying. Let, let's have you kind of just introduce yourself, and and then let's dive into the the meat of the story. All right, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Roop. And it's good to be here. I'm glad to be a guest today. <laughs> and I am Brock. You already introduced me, and I lead our client engagement team here at Littlefield Agency. So, what do I do? Uh, you ask. In a nutshell, working with clients on understanding, identifying. Their goals, uh, building marketing plans, media plans around how to support those goals, uh, how to get measurable business uh, results for them, and of course, consistent with our purpose, reimagine, try to lead our teams in how we can reimagine a client's business, whether that be in media, creative, et cetera, uh, just kind of mobilizing our folks around around, uh, our efforts to reimagine our client's business. But what do I do with Chelsea? Uh, I am Chelsea's supervisor. I hope she doesn't think of me that way. Not a real rigid guy, but uh, Chelsea does uh, does report to me, and we have not had the opportunity to travel together a lot until recently. What a treat for you! So, and describe that, Brock. <laughs> so, travel together. You've had some road trips. Oh have you ever gosh, been on a yeah. Plane with Chelsea. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. It's odd that an airplane is really where the rubber meets the road with Chelsea, <laughs> isn't it? So I'm going to start before the Uber ride that has become such a, an irritant for and, her. And just to remind folks, if, if you're jumping into this one, about two, pod- so two yeah, podcasts ago. We're so bucked with guests, it takes a while to yeah, circle back. But about busy two, people. We are. <laughs> but about two weeks ago, we had Chelsea on to describe this trip to Dallas. She made allegations. She said some things. And you're here to kind of have – we want to hear the other side of this. I'm just telling right? you how it is. I'm going right. to start well before the Uber ride, uh, get to the airport, probably 6.30, 7 a.m. Yeah. in Tulsa. I go through the TSA line. No big deal. It's a day trip. And I do glance behind me, and Chelsea's behind me in the check-in line at TSA, what might be five, ten minutes of, of getting through the line. So I think I'm a nice guy. I think I'm going to go grab a coffee, and I'm going to go get her – one of her oat milk lattes wow. that she really likes a she lot. She left this part out. Wow. So <laughs> sure I come back out. to the TSA check-in with 
coffee in my hand, oat milk latte in, in my other hand for her, and she's still over there talking to a TSA agent. And obviously they pulled her aside for some reason, and she comes out finally. Her oat milk latte is probably cold by then, and our flight is probably halfway to Dallas, but it wasn't. <laughs> but it took her a long time. So she comes out, and she's really irritated that they took something from her. It was a keychain. So they took a keychain from her, but oh, what this keychain was <laughs> and is is – it's like little pointy cat ears. Cute, right? It's little yeah. pointy cat ears. Sounds nice. Only underneath the little pointy metal pointed cat ears are, are two holes for your fingers to go through. <laughs> so what this really is, and I'm going to show this to anybody on YouTube this week with us, it's like brass knuckles <laughs> with two really sharp points on them. <laughs> she was it's so It's not a irritated. Hello Kitty keychain. <clears throat> no, it it's looks like it. It's a death keychain. And to my understanding, Brock, that could straight up gouge someone's eyes out. That's what it's used for. Yeah. To poke someone's eyes out. She was really irritated that they had the gall to to take this from her <laughs> yeah. at TSA. So, anyway, that was so how the day morning. started. Yeah. That's the morning. We get there. Was she at least appreciative uh, of, of the oat milk latte? Yeah, she was. I, I'm sure she was. It, like I said, it was probably half cold by then. But we get there, and the first Uber ride from airport to client's office I thought was generally fine. My biggest complaint, if there was one, the, the radio was up a little loud, you know, which kind yeah, of annoys happens. me. And yeah. I made the mistake of laughing at something that was on the radio. <laughs> so then that made the driver think that I was really listening. He turned it up even more. I guess he might have been driving erratically. I don't really notice. I compare. My fly, context maybe. is the worst cab ride you've ever had in Pickett, Chicago, New York. That's what I weigh everything against. Yeah. So anything from there. It's probably pretty good. The driver's not eating and talking on the phone while they're driving. My the life doesn't okay. flash. Yes, my life okay. doesn't flash before my eyes three times on the way there. It's fine. So He's native to the area. He knows what to do. Yeah, it's fine. It was fine. So, so From A to B. Yeah, I a guess B. Chelsea might have said some things about that ride there, and I just maybe wasn't listening. I don't know. So... Fast forward, we have a nice day of client meetings, and just before uh, we needed to head to the airport at 4, our client said, you know, get out of here at 4, traffic won't be an issue. Uh, if, you, if you're here after 4, you're going to be running up against it to catch your flight. So as we're ending things with the client meeting, I jump on the Uber app, and I look for a car, and I see, gosh, there's a car five minutes away probably still, so I'm not going to book it quite yet because we aren't done with our client meeting you're feeling safe yeah i'm yeah. feeling safe and then about five Better minutes minute. till i check again and the nearest car is like 20 to 30 minutes away i go uh oh i panic <laughs> i book it yeah. but i just think i'm booking a car apparently sometime in the day she had said we cannot do uber what's it called uber, uber x, x yeah. economy yeah. We can't do UberX. That was a horrible ride from the airport to the client's office. And maybe she mentioned it, probably mentioned it. I just ordered a car. And it wasn't the best car. So <laughs> it finally gets there, and we made it fine. But it pulls up, and there is, like, shipping tape, I guess, where the, the passenger side rear window meets the, the, the threshold at the top of okay. the window. There's shipping tape kind of keeping that closed. This yeah, is not uh, This is not going to be the Chelsea quality. No. Standards. Yeah. She gets in on that side. Uh, I get in on the other side. And, you know, the driver kind of makes a wrong turn, which is strange. They have directions on the app, and you'd figure they'd know how to get to the airport. Yeah. But, you know, makes a wrong turn, whatever. Um, it wasn't bad. The window was, was not great, and Chelsea claims that, that it was really hot in there. I think it was her maybe nervousness and anxiety. She says the engine was behind the, uh, the, the rear seat. I trust me you, that we weren't in, not in a, uh, a, a Corvair or some high-end exotic sports car with a rear engine. Uh, yeah. Not at all. So she's sweating. I think this is funny. I'm going to jump on our agency Slack channel and document a little bit yes. of this. Did and job, by the way. I take a photo and, and go post it on our agency Slack channel. She's been on our, our agency Slack channel by this time about 10 minutes, giving you all just a live update. Live, live update feed. every single detail how 
perhaps her life is going to come to an end on this Uber yeah, ride. She was, fe- she was fearful for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've had a lot worse. <laughs> so I, I didn't understand that. I, I, I'm like you, Brock. I'm just like, whatever car is going to get me here faster yeah, and get yeah. me from A to B. And I never, ever once thought about the difference between X and black. These names don't even make sense. It bothers me that Uber has a category for cars that are not up to standard, which I guess is what X is. I guess. Yes. I guess. But I was, I was taught when I was at, in Boston, I told this story to Kyle, <laughs> our, our HubSpot guy. And he was like, oh, yeah, you never want to use Uber X. And I was huh. like, really? He goes, yeah, it's no good. He, so he's on, he was on Chelsea's side. Now, I will say, when I scheduled a car to pick me up from the hotel to take me to the airport, which is pretty early. It was like 4.30 in the morning. I used Uber X because I'm looking out for Sam's dollars. Hey, thanks, man. On a trip, business trip, and, and uh, unlike Chels, and they gave me a Tesla. I got a Tesla. A brand Whoa. new red Tesla picked me up. Have you told Chelsea this? Yeah, she didn't believe me, but <laughs> yeah, it, it happened. So, like, I, I don't know that they're always going to be junk cars, but, like, that is kind of the reputation, I have to say. That said, she had to be exaggerating a lot of this. I would think so. I... It wasn't that bad. Yeah, That's all I'm going to say. That makes say. more sense to me. It wasn't dangerous. It was uncomfortable. Yes. Ch- Chelsea has a very whole... Very well said, by the way. Yeah, that's the right... Comfortable, yes. That's, that is Did it get true. you there? But it, you got was there it affordable? safely. Sure. She was upset. I, 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 she was upset. I went so far as to say... or I went so far as, as some sort of a, of, a, of a peace offering here. We had, I believe, a... Uh, window seat and a, and a middle seat on the way back and i had the window i, I switched with her gave her that window seat oh, so maybe nice. that would dollar. just be uh, a token of of uh, some sort of a, an offering for me for god forbid ordering an <laughs> uber x instead of uh, an uber black well I, you know i it's good to hear this side i i will say it's great to hear this side. chelsea has this whole list of brands and businesses and things she won't interact with and this is just adding to the list i still do all those things though i go to walgreens we're not gonna get them as a sponsor so i can say walgreens (laughs) or client probably now (laughs) i go to walgreens i use uber x i'm still here guess what you're doing yeah you're thriving thriving. it's fine i wonder if she would if if she let's just say she would want any any harm on her cut herself Right. Uh, not horrible, you know, but just an accident. Would she go to a Walgreens to get a bandage, or would she bleed? No, she'd send you to the Walgreens. She'd send oh, there you the go. Because yeah. she, she probably hasn't been in a Walgreens since, who knows, 1994. Yeah, it's a big deal when she does those things. And we're all looking out for it, but, yeah, she's added to the list. You know what, I will, um, to round out this subject, Brock, she kept it interesting, didn't she? True. You know, I guess I guess it beats a, a boring travel companion that just goes with the flow. We had fun, actually. <laughs> we did. We, we we had fun. And I haven't decided what kind of car I'm going to order, though, the next time that I travel with her. Which, by the way, is tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, it's tomorrow. I'll probably just do UberX. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. Please. And send pictures. We'll, I, we'll talk about it next honestly, week. Honestly, I think there's a way you can request previous drivers. <laughs> As well, there is. There is. Oh, that, you oh, can go be... to your driver history and find. Oh, this is news to me. Yeah, you can find. You can favor drivers in cities, and you can recall them or if they're available and driving. And I hope the window isn't fixed yet. Oh There's my gosh, no way I hope it is. That. Okay, well, so yeah, fun fact: Brock and Chelsea have a nice little day trip down to see our friends at TBK Bank, um, and then they jet back up. Oh my goodness, Brock! Please take pictures and please order an Uber X, please. Yeah, this is gonna. Well, is there anything lower than an Uber X? I in wish quality. I well, wish, but I don't think so. They rent scooters, but I, I don't want to wish right. that on anybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would be great to see Chelsea on an Uber scooter. Yeah, an Uber scooter. <laughs> All right, thank you, Brock. That is fantastic. You're down to stick around for a little bit for some digital trends. You bet. Yeah, Rubster. This is number one. Is calling yeah, your name. Like we said last week. Um, Serialized content. Serialized content. You're going to get some Boston updates, some inbound updates from from us here for uh, a while. And uh, last week we talked about the importance of first party data and why you want that and where where it's leading in the future. This week we're going to talk about something else, a term I, I heard there that made sense to me. We we kind of think this way already here, but this kind of brought it all together for me. And the term is connected customer growth strategy, or a CCGS. I'm trying to popularize CCGS, by the way. I like uh, that. Yeah. One of the, the, one of the founders of HubSpot, actually, I, th- I think it was one of the founders, was on stage speaking about this. And basically, a, a connected customer growth strategy is the way you grow. You know, so we talked about first-party data, who your users are, who your, your customers are. 
um, but you really have to learn more about them, right? You know, what, what content they like, what they don't, what their pain points are, all that jazz. The connected customer growth strategy says you meet them in the channels where they already live. So the whole idea from mm. the last 20 years of kind of getting people, luring them to your website to do things, we still want that. But you're kind of missing the long tail of engagement and interaction with your customers if you're not also meeting them in places where they, they live, on social media, on uh, messaging apps, on text messaging, snail mail even yeah. counts here. So like there's a lot of different ways to interact and, and, and talk to a customer. And one of the examples they gave, uh, I, I think it was a shoe company, and I can't remember the one, but uh, the shoe company did something like 80% of all their sales through WhatsApp. They never, the, the, the customer never came to the website. They ordered and had customer service mm. and payment all through an application. And they made a lot of money this way. And it really made me start thinking, I mean, that, that's the extreme, right? But the idea that people are comfortable in these channels and, you know, most of these platforms want to keep users on their platform. Yeah. So you're kind of fighting against the platforms to get them to leave there anyhow and come back to your website. Um, a, con a connected customer growth strategy uh, I'm going to try it again. CCGS. Yeah, not like it. <laughs> it's going to happen. A CCGS says uh, you connect with them and you earn their trust in the places they're comfortable uh, and you bring them relevant content with context to that conversation. So, you know, not just kind of jumping in to the middle of, of uh, a social platform or seeing them a text out of the blue. It has to have some relevancy to what you're doing. A couple of weeks ago, this happened. I had an ele electrician great coming. example. Mr. Yeah. Sparky. Mr. <coughs> Sparky was, was great. Mr. Sparky came to fix something that I later realized I could have done myself, besides the point. It's all good. It's Always ha happens to me nine times out of ten. Mr. Sparky came and uh, was looking at some elect electric electrical stuff for me. And the f my first interaction with Mr. Sparky was I found him on Google. They had good reviews. So I went to their website. I filled out a form that asked for my phone number so they could follow up with, uh, yeah. you know, make sure that, you know, you're, you still need us and scheduling uh, uh, this out. And I kind of picked a time window, and they called me and said, you know, hey, he can't come here the window you picked, which I didn't like that, by the way, but, you, you know, he'll be there tomorrow. So they followed up with a text message when he was coming out that had a picture of the guy coming, which I thought was pretty good. Like, you know, you want to feel safe. Smart. Yeah. yeah, real safe. And uh, so I could see he had shaved, so he looked a little different, but it was the same guy. Sent me a text message. They were, do they were communicating with me on text, which was very convenient. I can sit in meetings, and when Sam's not looking, check my phone to respond to text <laughs> messages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that, that easy going. That, he's easy going, but like that 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 happened. Uh, they followed up with an email that kind of had some details about what had happened. So they, they were kind of reaching out to me in multiple channels for this kind of one interaction. And I'm going to guess now that, and I haven't gotten one yet, but I'm going to guess that uh, I'll get some promotional stuff down the line. And I'll be curious to see where that happens. But I, you know, they lured me to the site, which I needed. But mm -hmm. then they're continuing to follow up with me in all these other connected ways because they got that data from me. They got, they, you know, I was willing to give it. I, I was like, okay, I, I do want to be able to talk to someone about this this appointment. So that's kind of what a, con a, a connected customer growth strategy is. It's expanding the channels you can reach your customers and doing it in a way that makes sense in that channel and for you know giving them content or information that they want. Um, the idea here is that you're attracting, engaging, and delighting them. Hmm. And I kind of was like I was I was I was attracted because they had good reviews on Google. Um, they engaged with me through a phone call, a, a, a physical phone call, and then I was delighted when I didn't have to have any more phone calls. They just sending me text messages about the appointment. It was great, and you know, like I said, there's businesses conduct conducting the majority of their business out there uh, in this way. So as you think about growing your first party data you're also trying to in the strategy identify the channels and the relevancy of content to channel for your business and where it makes sense to line those things up and then you go out and you make those connections you make those asks and you and you connect the dots you know it goes back to an old david littlefield ism and he would always talk about um the promise that a brand makes right so that brand p promise matching the brand experience. Yep. And I think about that, and it's a more archaic way to say it these, um, these days, but that's what you're talking about here. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, it's 100% you know, it, correct. It's, and, and Brock, like I think about, uh, Brock is very immersed in um, the Ditch Witch and the Grasshopper business, um, but Brock and Roop thinking specifically about Ditch Witch here, right? Like there's so many touch points, and millennials, to your point, want relevant content and yes a website is still a, a great thing and we want people to convert on websites but users especially younger users are doing that so differently these days 
if you th if you think about conversion, you know, the conversion being that one thing you want someone to do on your website. If you know, usually it's a sale or mm -hmm. purchase or something. If you if you expand your mind and your universe beyond the website for conversion and say, well, you know what? There's opportunities for me to make that sale on Instagram or Facebook yes. or through through text Amazon. messaging or through Amazon yeah. or through a web app or through whatever. I mean, that's a good thing, and that's really what people want now. They want it's a it's convenient, and b it shows you understand them in a way that, that is honest and transparent, and that's that's key. And you're right, yeah. Your your dad had kind of in a in a less technical world <coughs> kind of Absolutely. coined and understood this concept very well. And I think this is just kind of like the modern application of that concept in a lot of ways. Yeah, it's really about. A client's own owned and social channels, great. It, you got to have those, uh, and you've got to do a good job, as Rube's saying, with conversion strategies. But that's just the start of it, you know. Just because you've got, let's say, you even have a sound content strategy uh, for uh, the content that you're producing on your own channels, you've got to get well beyond that, well outside of your own social media channels. Okay, that's a great series of videos that you put out there on your Facebook channel, but mm -hmm. That's not where most of your folks are. They're on their own channels. So being able to go out there and be on the channels that they're on as your prospective customers Absolutely. that aren't on your website every day, let's face it. Yep. Yes, and it's a know, great point. You, you have to identify the ones and optimize to the best effect and all that. But, I mean, it's getting more splintered. It is. Uh, we were just talking about this this morning. You know, it, 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 there's still the game. Facebook's big. I always have to add this asterisk when we talk about Facebook, but they're not the thing they used to be. And you know, the, the there's generations coming underneath that do not have an don't care. You know, they're on TikTok, they're yep. on they're on Instagram, they're on other apps, apps still to be named, right? So adapting a strategy where you're identifying and earning and growing those channels out is going to be really important like you have to be able to keep up with the speed of this change and just saying you know what we got facebook and we're good isn't going to cut it anymore that's old honestly that's old, old. I, I almost consider old, old. facebook traditional yes. at this point so um anyhow yeah uh, con con to customer growth strategy i'm going to probably going to write a blog about this by the way uh -oh. do you like Maybe that uh-oh did you, Dude, like you just sign yourself up i, yeah, I, mean, I, love I don't it. mind it i don't I mind it, it. It's uh, serialized content. We're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, here's the funny thing. R before we go, before we segue into digital trend number two, <laughs> Ruth will do things like this where he'll be like, hey, you know what? This would make it and, and he'll do it. He'll follow through. And like in a week or two, I'll, he'll shoot me an email and be like, hey, here's a thousand page blog or a thousand I don't word. Write that uh, not a thousand page. page. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand word blog post. And it's damn good. It's really, really insightful and wonderful. Um, but then I asked him to show up at 8 a.m. He's like, dude. Oh, my God. He had a By the way, I can't believe you haven't even brought that up yet. Yeah, I was going to. All right, here's what happened. <laughs> and Brock was part of this. Uh, <laughs> not his fault. He was part of the, the crime that was committed. Brock's Sam at the A&T every morning between 6.45 and 7, though. So he's it, just another day in the life. But oh, dude, you're Roop, ruining Roop, though, Roop is our, uh, comes in, you know, between 8.30, 8.45, sometimes yeah. maybe no, a little bit later. Night owl. He's a night he's owl. He's our night owl. He stays past 6 on most, yeah. most evenings. So, um Imagine my horror. I'm not a morning person. I think you kind of are. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> my, my typical day, my alarm goes off at 745, and I get out of bed at 8. And I live 60 seconds from here. <laughs> you literally live 60 seconds from here. And I get here at 830, 845. So imagine my horror when Sam changes an invite or adds something. We have an exec team. We're all on the executive team here. And um, <laughs> they're usually at lunch on Wednesdays, yeah, yeah, Wednesdays. Or they'll bounce around a little bit, but they're kind of in the middle of the day. I had to look at this invite twice. I was like, why is he Why is he doing an 8 p.m.? Oh, no. That says 8 a.m. Which is why I sent the So um, he said follow email. email. And I, he did everything <laughs> but come over to my desk and say, hey, <laughs> I know this is out of, out of character, but tomorrow you need to be here at 8 o'clock. And I was. I did. Dude, the, but your, your well first before. response was assuming 8 p.m.? Over 8 a.m.? <laughs> yeah, because I thought, well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to have a beer and, I, beer and cigar. I, I thought, it. well, I'm already, I think I'll stay another hour. And, you know, <laughs> you know what? Next time I change an exact meeting, and obviously, you know, Brock's traveling tomorrow, I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm going to do it at 8 p.m. Just, 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 for, just for fun. See, see how everyone reacts. See if anyone knows. Yeah, everyone's going to love that. It was um, fine. I'm awake and I'm. I'm and yeah, you're, I'm you're crushing it. Good. Yeah. Okay, segueing into digital trend number two Snapchat has launched a new dual camera option that is very similar to be Roop's real favorite. My, my favorite app of the summer yeah Roop is loving of the sun uh, the app of the summer, That's app probably, of the summer. you should probably tm that um <laughs> and hey instagram right they're taking inspiration from this with be real etc 
Um, there's no technical surprise here. It's, it's a different way. This is a different approach to functionality. Um, but be real is it 10 million daily active users and obviously that's their most important metric yeah it's it, that's how generally social channels measure their success yep. or their audiences usually on a 30-day th- a kind of deal because you you know some some apps you don't check every day but they kind of look at it and say you may check it three or four times a month and they can claim that so uh, you know like Twitter ha- I think has 300 million maybe 350 now a uh, million monthly users Kay. Facebook YouTube and uh, obviously and TikTok have a wild. billion. Uh, monthly users so it was weird to me at first when I read this and saw be reels number was based on the day 10 million a day so 300 a month give or take but uh, th- then it made more sense to me the nature of their app is that you only check it once a day so they're not looking f- they in fact discourage repeated daily views so that's pretty good like their they're, they're metrics different so they changed it but that's that's honestly we don't think about them this way or I don't think we have to this point they're pretty much equal to a Twitter right now in Which terms is, of universe that's, size. That's wow. a wild thought. And Roop, I've never asked you in this from a brand perspective, but like, are you are you seeing brands? No. On Be Real, no. Very much an individualized. Yeah, it's based on an, a personal experience that you are not obsessed with. And I honestly, there's a couple of days I'll just skip it. I don't even do anything. But if I see Brock post or I see, uh, you know. Reynolds or someone post, and I'm like, oh, you know, I wonder what they did today. It encourages you to participate, and so you post whatever's going on at that moment, and you see it. It's very um, native, raw. Yeah, there's no, there's no links, there's no video. It's literally what, what is this person doing at some random time during the day that the app prompts you to take a photo? And that concept is, is it's they, they call themselves the anti-social media network because they're trying to kind of like downplay it. What was really clever about what they did though was the implementation of front dual camera photos. Yes. So they'll take a, you know, the, the, they take a photo of whatever you're looking at, and then a millisecond, two seconds later, you kind of have to hold for a minute. They need to fix that. Uh, it'll take a picture of, of you and your reaction to what you're seeing, yep. which is really unique. So we ta- I think we talked about this a month or so ago. Um, it was unique enough that uh, it wasn't going to be long till other <laughs> platforms adapted it, and, and here we go. It's happening. Snapchat's doing it. Uh, Instagram's testing the features. I think you're probably going to read in the next little bits that they're about to roll out. Yep. Um, it you know it is what it is. Snap, snap. Be real will probably be one of those footnotes in social media history, like Vine, that kind of evolved into other mm-hmm. things. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, and you know, I don't know if anyone ever threatened to purchase them. They didn't really quite have the audience size to be that valuable. But if they had any offer at all, they probably should have taken it. No. <laughs> um, yeah. So, and you know, anyhow, Be Real is, is has been I- fun to follow and interesting to follow and, and watch its growth this year in particular. It's it grew three times. It's been around since like 2018 or 17, something like that. And in the last 12, maybe it's 18 months, now, it's skyrocketed. And yeah, it you know, like always happens, the the big boys see that and they adapt that. that and to that's the what you know. Obviously, we've talked for months now about Instagram trying to keep up with TikTok. And so you know, what does does Instagram capitalize on this dual lens? you know, play, do they roll out something? Obviously they're, they're focused very much on reels um, right now and, and video and video. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. And I don't know if, if be real, I mean, be real is just such a different platform. They don't want you on it. It's so fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's, it's different, but that, that, that thing that made them unique. I mean, the two things made them unique, but the one that I thought was immediately made me want to participate was this dual camera thing. And I'm going to say it again. I've said it every time this has come up. We are minutes away from the next iOS update or phone doing doing that. Like I can't really do on my own a dual camera photo. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's going to happen. Hmm. And not only do I think uh, you know that's going to happen, I think we're going to see the ability to take because of the rise of vertical video and, and vertical vertical images on social. But these platforms all want that. I think we're going to turn to taking a shot with your camera and it taking two at the same time one a horizontal crop and one a vertical God crop dang because it is a pain in the you know what to i just did that we were at the botanical gardens this weekend and i wanted to take photos i'm like well i need horizontal for my uh screen savers <laughs> and slideshows and, and books i'm going to print and all this jazz but i need vertical for tiktok yes. and reels and all this so like i had to make a decision and i went with the tiktok and, d- and did verticals but and later, I was like, man, I kind of wish I had some of those I could put so on the slides. So, like, that's going to happen. They're going to merge these. They're going to figure out a way to crop these or, or, or take two at once. And you have two folders and the same images crop two different ways. It's all happening. But, um, 
yeah, anyhow, be real. We'll we'll okay. we'll pour one out for them probably in about it six months <laughs> to, okay. to a year. But <laughs> never forget, they were the first. I, I love it. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give uh, you yes, a, a little follow up on a trend you guys covered uh, in the last month. I think I was uh, at home the other day, and, and my wife had been reading an article. She says, "Do you know, Rock?" <laughs> What has overtaken Google among young people as the preferred search engine? And I say, well, yeah, of course I do. It's my job. (laughs) She couldn't believe it. I asked my kids who are uh, 18 and 20, and thankfully, I say thankfully, to some extent as a father, they're still using YouTube more for the search engine uh, than Google, but they're not using TikTok as a search engine yet. And for whatever reason, that just makes me happy. But yeah, it was funny because you guys had talked about it just a month ago or less. And my wife says, do you know? I say, yes, of course I do. Well, I love that April's in the know too. That's great. She listens to the podcast. Keeping you on your toes, buddy. I don't know if she listens to the podcast. She'll listen to this one and maybe then she'll listen from then on. Yeah. See, she can be that much further ahead. That that is very true. Yeah. And uh, make sure she's subscribed. Yes. Do a little bit. Yes, subscribe. Next week will be coming out probably Tuesday. Holy cow. So we're going to, looking ahead, Brock and Chelsea go to Dallas tomorrow. We've got a meeting in Perry on Thursday. We have a new business meeting here on Friday. We have a lot going on at the agency, which is super fun as we ramp up into October. So, yes, October 1st is Saturday. We have digital trends going out on Tuesday morning that we don't want to. We know when you come back Monday morning from the weekend, you're bombarded with emails. We're not going to flood your inbox with the slew of other emails you have. So be on the lookout on Tuesday. We're excited. It is getting cooler here. Thank goodness for some fall weather. Um, Art in the Square in Utica Square is this Saturday. I'm very excited. Yeah. Do we have – isn't there some – also, airport stuff coming up. That oh yeah, we need to. So you're saving for next week, or you? I talk? think we should save for next week okay. once it's officially launched. But okay. we've, we we have an epic campaign. Epic is true. That kicks off on Saturday, and it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, so we're do, we're finalizing details and <laughs> crossing T's and dotting I's and going crazy over here. But we're excited. Yeah, so. it's going to be big. Brock, thank you for the insight. Thank you for the facts. It's nice to have the the other side of the Anytime. story and the factual. Um, aspect to it but especially when it comes to chelsea you really do yeah need yeah you, you really do. you need yeah. you need that gut check so brock it is great to see you as always and to have you on the podcast thanks guys rooster yeah. next week amigo all righty that's it okay we're out hey thanks for listening thanks for watching adios see you guys bye-bye